Disclaimer. When it comes to the people I cover on Spacey Critiques, please don't go and attack or harass them. No matter they're extremely well behaved or a genuine monster, don't stoop to any level to get back at them like A-logging and or doxing. That is just plain shitting and very mature overall. And with that, let's get on to the video. Damn, it has been a while since last time, hasn't it? Oof. Well, we have something amazing to make up for that actually. Someone who continually insists that they'll improve their behavior after every mistake they make, only for them to go back doing the same shit again. Who am I talking about? Well, let's see, because oh boy, it's a doozy. Sup everyone, Spacey here, and today we are back at this critiquing game. Well, in a completely different environment, but still. After so long since the last video, you may be wondering about my absence, and all I have to say is, I got lazy, and the material for the last two months has been a bit lacking. But today, we have something more back to basics, but also something really juicy at the same time. Someone who is a massive handful with their behavior, and are so petty and whiny, it makes me wonder how they continue to be like this, and still have supporters that suck up to them. Enter Reed Kamafa, Attack of the Cat People, or Old Kazistan as they're most known. They have existed for a long time on the internet since the mid-2010s. God, can you still get to hear that ancient time? Well, I guess it's starting to get to that point. And throughout their time on the internet, they have continued to be a big nuisance, and they have thrown tantrum after tantrum along with claiming they have improved despite everything to the contrary. At first, they don't seem that bad, but there is a lot of shit under the basic autist persona that they try to present themselves as, but there's a lot to unpack with them, so let's start this dive. Okay, first thing on a chopping block is their DeviantArt. Their main profile is showing everyone what they have to offer, and at first, it just seems like basic autism, logos, and other things associated with DeviantArt types. But we do have shit about talking about MA 2019, which we'll make a note about and save that for later alongside the public Discord server, which will be a doozy when we get to it, oh boy. Back to the DA page though, and let's look what we have here. Let's start by talking about their art, and JESUS, if you want bomb of the barrel quality that makes Club Autism blush with how lazy it is, look no further here. Where to tackle first? Hmm. Alright, let's talk about the anatomy. The first thing that you see that is very awful. The characters themselves are amputees with no hands or even 50% of their arms for that matter. And the necks are super long and thin too, resulting in the necks that will get they can snap at any moment. This already looks like shit, but the individual characters could also have their own issues. Exandria has a big body with disproportionately tiny legs. Nathan looks like he has bent legs all the time, stones for shoes, orange grass for hair, and has weird different arms on both sides. And Anya? Well, let's just say ever since her next snap, the only system she could play was the game Philip. This isn't just an issue with the main characters though, as this extends a lot further to others as well, including other characters as well. For example, Rupert looks very handicapped here, looking like he's squatting, and those eyes and mouth say a lot about what's happened to him. Also, we'll cover Reed and Rupert's weirdness later. I just think the piece is a perfect example of Reed's bad proportions. What also doesn't help is the lacking variety. Most of the art from way back then was Reed's characters just standing there, menacingly, in front of you. But now some experimentation exists, and while it does seem like to be worth it at first, it really doesn't impress at all. For the extra angles, they just highlight Reed's bad anatomy and how she doesn't know any form of construction or perspective, making the characters look like invertebrate noodles waggling around like inflatable tube dudes. Also, we have to mention events like this one in the description of this piece. It says that it's based off a of Reed color with transphobic undertones. Yeah, no, there is zero transphobia here. Just saying it might be a bit petty. Well, damn, this is something. I guess this will be a top tier grindcore cover. It also opens up a lot of 41% jokes concerning this is suicide, but I am not that tasteless and not a bigot, so let's throw that out. Also, the description mentions how they allude to taking it out on my cats. What could this mean, Reed? What could this mean? Are they the next Poolich Entertainment? Who knows? 
But hey, at least the wonky anatomy makes it look like Kami's performing Gangnam Style here. Omarashi um, style. Back on topic though, now that the main issue of the art has been covered, let's cover everything else wrong with the art, like the shitty line work, which comes in three varieties. Thick, which isn't too bad, but you can clearly tell they didn't put much effort into it, with how many common line mistakes happen. Almost feels like a crutch, really. Then we have the thin one, which looks a lot worse, thanks to the fact that they put even less effort into making the lines look clean, making for a shaky mess that's extremely lazy. The lines don't even connect at times, which for a grown adult is absolute dog shit, and proves that these drawings are puked out with no regard to quality, time, or effort. Alongside that, which is related, is the traditional style, which looks like a kid did it. Seriously, the line and coloring job here is so lazy and rushed, I thought a 7 year old had done it. Seriously Reed, learn the fundamentals before you draw shit like this. Finally, we also have something akin to lineless, which just takes the issues with the thin line style and just removes the outlines. Really shows how lineless doesn't have much of this style Reed is going for. So yeah, no matter how Reed draws, as of now, it will always look like a mess. Another thing that looks awful is the coloring. All of it looks basic as hell. From what I can tell, it looks like they took the max saturation value for each color and just applied it everywhere. It doesn't apply to every character, but it applies to most of them. And even the ones that don't have it, it'll look like a jarring contrast compared to something with actual flow to it. A lot of the characters don't even feel like they fit the artwork most of the time. If Reed ever hopes to improve the color schemes, maybe make less jarring contrast between colors and try different variations. There's stuff like Adobe Color which really helps in terms of finding color schemes. As of now however, it looks stock as hell with no personality to it. Oh yeah, and speaking of characters not fitting, let's talk about the backgrounds. Or more accurately, the lack of backgrounds most of the time. This lack of effort in terms of making backgrounds already turns this stock piece of art into something even more blander than it already is. And when backgrounds do exist, yeah, they just look like shitty side-scrolling platform levels. This is also something that Reed's gotten definitively worse at as well. In 2021 or so, a good amount of the artwork actually had backgrounds, and despite them still not looking that great, I still feel like there was more ever put into them and fit the characters a lot more than nowadays, as it's all bare white now, or this weird pattern that comes from an app known as Freeform, which is more of a notes taking app that is way worse than Procreate in every single way in terms of artwork. So why Reed uses Freeform when she already has Procreate is a mystery to me. Back on topic though, this shows how much of a downgrade Reed went through in some areas like effort, and I can't think of anything that made any major improvements in throughout their time on this account, which is extremely sad due to how even the barest of research and effort would improve their art significantly. Oh yeah, speaking of criticism, while we're not on the behavior section yet, here is how Reed responds to people calling her art bad. I am not very good at art, I admit it, but the lower quality works still have a certain charm to them. That's why I do what I do. It may not be the exact best, but it has a charm. The lifeless style of Kami's world is completely deliberate. It's meant to evoke the country balls, Greeny Fathom, and Jetty aesthetic. I'm a procreate artist, and my drawings are like this mannequins. That is the intended style. It's unironically influenced by Greeny Fathom and M. Jetty, but still. I knew I was going for an aesthetic for Cammy's world, but I couldn't quite find the words to describe it. Until now, that is. Introducing DeviantArt Cringecore Ketsik. Basically, it's supposed to look like shit. Finally, we have a name for the Molly Hales My Friend Dev Cat Scratch M. Jetty Aesthetic. <laughs> Sorry, this is no excuse for art being shitty and not listening to criticism. Saying it's a style and deliberate doesn't work because there is no style char outside of being shit, and everything that is deliberate are lazy shortcuts used to shit out art faster. Alongside that, as someone who actually likes art that is charming and soulful, 
There is nothing to your art that has any soul to it. Dare I say it's as lifeless as art could be on DeviantArt. Also, artists that have soul don't fucking brag about it or make it their brand. Soul can help make an artwork good, but at the same time, it really can't take you far if you're using it as a crutch, which is what you're doing right now. Actual soulful artists actually have potential to grow and improve their craft, or do something unique and of their own that really shows they put effort into the work. Neither of which you have, Reed. Also, imagine being influenced by a nonsensical man-child who revolves his life around logos. Someone who draws characters in diapers all the time and has made actual terrorist threats. And a shitty artist who not only helps to define the club autism style, but also loves a certain real like 12 year old as well when they're like 26 years old at that. Yeah, you can tell from this alone that Reed is quite the acoustic person, but this is the beginning of something far worse which will be saved for later. For now, let's look at another super large part of their art, the character war. Now even as someone who criticizes his art, I could say that even if the art is kinda mid, I think the lore of the characters can make up for it if it's so full or well written enough. So let's see how Kami's wrote our cat flower on Scratch for some reason. Yeah, that exists and I have to cover that too. Works as a series. So Kami's world stars Kami and her friends as they get to go on failure adventures to... Yeah, I got nothing. I can't even define what this series is about, which is detrimental to the characters since they don't have any motivations or goals to aspire to. But that implies that the characters have any personalities outside of that, but no. We learn nothing about most of the characters in any art piece. The only thing we have to learn are the bios of Kami, the main character, which has evolved throughout the years. Let's check out the latest bio from 2023 and see if we can get any info on the character. Name, Kami, Dila, Mary, Faye, Delgo. I guess they couldn't pick a last name and thus made this mess. Nice. Sounds more like a dollar store soda than the real names to be honest. Age, somewhere between 8 and 21. Okay, this is a massive red flag. That range is way too broad, but also oddly specific to make this anything but concerning. I bet this decision was made as an excuse for disturbing content. Seriously, that's the only logical explanation. They since said something about timelines, but I'm not sure that makes them unique, so the excuse part still stands. Friends. King K. Roll, Gender Ben Triplets, Short Legs Woman, Nathaniel Bandy, Frisky Feline, Young Boy AJ, Eric Plodcon Guy, Game Philip, White Sauce Pizza, Tugs the Boat, and Rectangle. Coolio. I didn't learn anything. Let's see if the bad guys are any better. Enemies. Rectangle. And Russian Man? Yeah, I still don't know anything. Maybe the likes can help. Likes. Cats. Drawing. Making friends. Uh, did a five year old make this bio? These interests sound like a kid idea of what counts as a personality. This girl likes to draw, a be friendly, and like little kitty cat. Like, does she have any other specific art hobbies like pottery? Does she have any other likes that reflect her personality? Does she like to do other things with people since she seems friendly? And how does that reflect her current relationships? We need more info to make her not super generic. Same goes for the dislikes too, but the dislikes have something interesting. Dislikes. Yellow liquids like lemonade. It's a long story. Yeah, it really is. We'll elaborate further on this very soon. Finally, as a bonus, and to add some epic diversity points, we have conditions like... Conditions. Intersex. Eh, maybe potentially fetishy, but let's just leave that alone. Delayed puberty. Ew. Autism. ADHD. Well, duh. Peanut and dust allergies. Another eh thing. Diabetes. For a few minutes about diabetes. Epilepsy. <laughs> yeah, I don't have that much room to talk with most of these conditions, but I don't think all of them can happen at once. Also, I don't expect any realism in this series, so this just feels off. And that is if she can even tackle these issues in a serious way without coming off as jarring or even weird to say the least. But yeah, Cammy's kind of a shit character, and from what I could tell, the rest are better as well. All of the characters are the same set of stock tropes with no personality outside of the cliché they were assigned to. Frankly, talking about 98% of them would be repetitive because of that. Also, have you noticed the theme of these designs? Yeah, they all look identical with different colors, and may be clothes too, if you're lucky. For someone who claims that these characters are based on frogs and insects, they look nothing of the sort. With not even a single element of a frog or bug outside of maybe the odd colors, but even then, that's kind of a super stretch stretcher than Stretch Armstrong. 
In fact, these designs truly highlight what they really are, shitty Greeny Fathom knockoffs. Knowing its inspiration in their childhood too, it's not a shocker. It holds back the designs by a lot, and if they decide to ditch the wannabe Greeny Fathom style and instead make it more about toad and insect-like creatures with variety, things would improve a lot. This is Reed though, so the likelihood of this is basically 0%. There is one interesting thing about the lore of Cammy's World though, and that is the villains. The bad guys of Cammy's World are something alright, as they're mostly based on real people Reed has beef with, showing how much drama is integrated within Reed's fiction. It gets real stupid, trust me. Let's first talk about the only villains who have zero drama connection. Rectangle, looks like something from a logo blooper and not a series like Cammy's World, who apparently comes from this Country Ball series, but considering I haven't heard of Country Balls outside of passing glances, I don't think I have any room to talk. Still seems like a stupid crossover pick though. If Rectangle were to evolve into an original villain, he would need a way better design if he were to be treated as anything more than a shitty logo thing. And the personality? Yeah, I wish he had a personality. He doesn't even have a motive. Not even a single petty one. Just nothing. This already sucks, but the enemies based off drama are even worse. Starting with Dear Leader Fustan, who is apparently the leader of Fascist Alatimestingenkaya. Horny name, isn't it? Who is based off a DA user known as Dimitri Fustan, who Reed threw a tantrum about. And you could tell Reed wanted to villainize him with the bio alone. The leader of Fascist Alamisikia, his first real name is Dimitri, but he doesn't like being called that. Epic roast there, I am raffling as we speak. Ha ho ha ho ha. Friends! Xing <laughs> Jumping, Vladimir Putin, The Taliban, Jeffrey Epstein, Glad Seeing Maxwell, Prince Andrew. Oh, wow. <laughs> Wholesome people. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, but in all seriousness, one thing I tend to nitpick with people's lore is the fact that they make all these silly creatures and then they just make the setting Earth. Usually America, which feels really out of place. But this is on another level, as apparently these real life criminals exist in the Cam universe, which not only shows how obvious an attempt this is to villainize Dimitri, but also raises a lot of questions that I feel like won't get answered. All I have to ask is, did Cammy's family visit Epstein Island at one point? It seems like a fun adventure for the whole family. Anyways, enemies Cammy, Exandria, Rectangle, Nathan, Felicia, Anna, Cameron. Pretty much everyone who isn't a tanky or a nonce. And it wouldn't be complete without hitting our good guys as well. Also another tanky thing too. Likes. Fascism. Wait. Does Reed realize that tankies and fascists are two very different ideologies that clash heavily? Not very shocking coming from someone who's only heard these terms from Twitter. Given how both of these words are thrown around in Twitter echo chambers to refer to ideologies that are le bad, with Reed juxtaposing them with each other to make this boogeyman more hideous, minus the contradictions, any further research, because that would require effort, something that Reed has made excuse after excuse to avoid, but this is a glaring issue, even if you only know the basics of both ideologies, you will understand how flawed this is. And it also shows Reed knows jack shit about making characters, as all she can muster up about a villain is that they like bad stuff. If a typical plain ass JRPG villain are a lot more complex, then you failed hard. Anyways, totalitarianism, kidnapping children for sick experiments. To finish off the dislike, we have another basic ideology and a basic trait. These would be fine if other stuff built off them to make a more interesting character, but since this is Reed, she can't even do that due to how the character is just built as a boogeyman first and foremost. Dislikes, democracy, fair elections, age of consent laws. Wow, these dislikes do really show the deep complexities of the character and their motivations. Not. Defeat. Incident involving a god tier several. Because of course the random god would defeat the villain, because I guess Cam being all powerful would be too obvious. Well, it still feels generic when his downfall isn't based on actual character flaws. And no, this shit is not the same as actual character flaws. And all of this comes off as an imaginary villain to give you a petty power rush. Next up on the list of bad guys is Tesla Tron Live, which is based on those fucking YouTube Tesla hackers. Yes, I shit you not. This does not even have any meaning beyond, wah, they hack some YouTuber me like, which even ends up being so whiny and blown out of proportion that even nuking an anthill isn't as catastrophic. 
a very laughable villain overall. The next character I'm going to talk about isn't necessarily a villain, but this does fit within the theme of Reed using fiction or to project her insecurities and other life events onto us. Enter Ying Li. <laughs> God. If you want to know what this character is, they're essentially a vegetable. A complete patch-grown vegetable. And they are, well, a special ed kid. A fucking retard, essentially. You can really tell that this is what Ri was going for by this fucking fun facts channel on her server. <laughs> fucking every single time she posts on it, it's always stuff like, Fun fact, if you break Ying Li's fidget cube, then Ying will spurg out and break you. <laughs> I honestly don't care that much since I just find this more funny if anything and somewhat necessary in order to vent about special education but at the same time I don't really feel like it's necessary to really take it out on some random student that Reed has probably encountered. I mean you can clearly tell it's a student because look at the Asian name. That probably has to represent some Asian student that Reed had to deal with who just so happened to be quite the vegetable. So yeah that's all I really had to mention about them but it was enough of a notable discovery for me to really mention it here. <laughs> Back to your regular programming with villains. Finally, we have Leland Burcaster. Yeah, Reed's really good with character names, am I right? Who seems to be loosely based on someone known as the Nexus on DA, who Reed is whining about as of writing. It, Jesus, it's really taking forever if this is what I'm doing as of writing. God, the fucking time gap. Now this character is interesting as he actually has motivations and is somewhat of a personality, as he's deceptive but if the goal is to make an interesting character, then it still falls in the trap of being filled with so much drama baggage and projection. But hey, I could still say that it could lead to improvement in making characters and... Never fucking mind. She made the meanie weenie CEO David Zaslov the villain of the third Cammy's role movie. And this is the worst of them all, as there's no attempt at hiding it and reeks of wanting cartoon faggotry. Does she realize that David Zaslav is a rather underrated CEO, as he's trying to get Warner Bros. Discovery out of debt by making tax write-offs? Seriously, I don't think any of y'all realize that Warner Bros. Discovery has been heavy debt as of late, and they really need to unload some of the baggage in order to make it easier. Seriously, would any of y'all have actually cared about some of these projects if they weren't MINI TAX WRITE-OFFS, or would you have just forgotten about them if they had released like normal? The only movie out of the bunch I could expect a bunch of people to care about would probably be Batgirl. That's probably the saddest stacks right off as the movie was basically complete and would have made lots of money regardless. Unlike these other projects which would have been outdone by Velma regardless of if they were released or not. But then again, they only want stuff for them and they want it NOW 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 NOW! I guess this is why Cammy's World has no plot as it's only used for power fantasy for what Reed finds bad as of the current moment. Whenever it be about a user that she acts like a complete child about, bad things that have happened in the entertainment industry, specifically when they act mean-spirited towards animation, animation is cinema, you know, those freaks that Reed really resembles, or overly spiteful political subject matters that makes me really wish politics wasn't integrated into everything so that we wouldn't have people like Reed joining the culture war and spreading stupid shit. I think this is most exemplified by the closest thing to something cameo related that has a plot, the webtoon comic, which, while old, still gives the direction Cammy's world has. But if you think the plot involves Cammy and friends going on adventures, then you would be dead wrong. It's actually more akin to a Gagaday comic. Now despite all the series which fell off, and some complete goy slop shit that has absolutely tarnished the genre, the Gagaday comic isn't inherently a bad formula. Hell, one of my favorite comics is a Gagaday comic, that being Calvin Hobbes, which blends some deep philosophy while still retaining a lot of fun adventures with the characters. But this Cammy's World comic adds something very toxic which utterly destroys any chance of it becoming a good comic. After the first comic, it started to become one of those political Gagaday comics. You know, the stone tosses, the ant tunes, the blobby inference type of thing. And this is what really makes the comic so shitty. Comic number one is a bad washer joke, with the worst liner I have ever seen. Like, seriously, what the hell happened to the right side that caused this huge mess? And the text legibility, well, you can certainly say it's text alright. I could barely even read it. At least I could say every other webcomic I've seen has legible text, but this required some concentration in order to figure out what the hell was going on. And not in a fun way either, it's more akin to, wait, do you really expect people to read it with this quality? 
The thing I'll most compare it to is when you were bored at school and you decided to draw on the desk just to pass the time. It's the exact same goy slob type quality that you see here. Oh, I'll go further than that and say this looks like the type of shit you would see on the bathroom walls of your school. Ironically enough though, despite the horrible drawing quality though, this is the best written one as it actually has a joke. We will sadly not get this luxury in comics 2 and 3. Comics Dos and Tross are when Kami's World starts to become another blobby and friends type comic. These two comics in particular are complaining about the big bad NFTs. Despite them talking about two different instances and having their own unique quirks, particularly the second comic's more mm, unique formatting, they both essentially boil down to the same joke. Hey guys, did you know NFTs are horrible, mean-spirited, meanie things? Wow guys, that's funny. Laugh, 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 laugh. They don't even tackle a unique and fun presentation like the Culture War comics do. Both comics are just the characters reacting to random news articles from the real world, which is honestly the laziest way you could potentially do this kind of commentary. These two comics feel very AI generated with how they're presented, as you could replace Kami with any character and the same point would get across. And you could even replace the news story and replace her reaction to make for a pretty good propaganda machine. For the sake of humanity, let's hope no governments ever watch this, because I think very horrible things could come when they see this. But yeah, I know I'm really off base at this point, but there's really no other way I could conclude the lore about Kami's world, since nothing much exists outside of ways to fuel hate boners and lots of cardboard too. Of course though, like every Demon or Autist, Reed has to make dumbass memes because of course the Saiba art has a lot of epic memes. Let's look at a few as our last look on Reed's Deviant art. First, we have these spammy year and follower images, which aren't too special, except for the fact that Reed's entire validation relies on DA watchers, which is pretty lame. But again, we'll wait until the behavior section to get more detail about this. For now, here's an unironic Virgie vs. Chad meme regarding AA art protesters. As if this meme hasn't been beaten to death by autists who have completely missed the point of the OG meme, and have ironically also spammed it quite a bit. Anyway, let's look at Reed's arguments made here and see if they hold any water. Does nothing to change anything. That is overly vague, honestly. I understand that it isn't effective on sites like Twitter, and it reeks of shitty political activism at its absolute worst, which, knowing your Twitter, you definitely seem to be the type to do it for more culture war politics reasons. But ArtStation, it's helped to spread awareness about ArtStation not protecting artists and letting their art be sourced, which is a great area I feel like is one of the only things I feel like artists could complain about it. And it made DeviantArt start forcing people to put their art in the AI database. So it did make a difference in the end. For the record, I do think anti-AR zealots are super crazy and delusional a lot of the time by constantly pissing and chilling themselves over AI art and also pushing for copyright stuff, which will end up doing more harm than good, which could have helped your point, but I guess that's too advanced for Reed. I don't care about what you're protesting, I watched your account for art. I mean, artists only post the image once, so it's easy to ignore when looking through individual galleries. The exception is ArtStation, but even then that's still small and only an issue on the front page. Even then, artists do sometimes use artistic methods to protest AI art. Also, this comes off as really ironic knowing how many epic shit post and super dumb updates you put on your deviant page read. In the end though, this is just a curly basic ass point with no depth at all. No artistic value whatsoever. This specific argument will be very ironic once we delve into the chat portion of this image. Even then, like I mentioned before, artists sometimes add creativity to it. Also, also like before, let's look at your shit. Yeah, bunch of lifeless ass art pieces. So you are really one to talk about artistic value. So even then the point is mediocre. But if you thought the virgin section was bad, oh boy, the chat section is probably even worse. Starting with... Comes in many forms, all of which embodiments of creativity and the brilliance of the human mind. There is also a lot of shit with no dedication or talent put into it too, and a lot of stuff that is also gross. Again, being overly vague with no other supporting evidence. Even a bunch of squares or a public urinal can be art. Art can be anything. No artistic value. Art can be anything. Pick one, please. Outside of that, though, you seem to fit perfectly with those weird, pretentious, deep art critics, young adult college writer brain rotters, and animation and cinema people. Pretentious weirdo. 
Also, that public journal image was meant to be a statement on what counts as art, just like how anti-AR images is a statement on how artists want to keep their art free from databases. So yeah, your meme is collapsing in on itself. Even Sonic Inflation art with recolored characters has at least some artistic value, more than AI art bad during her chain letters. Eh, I only think we're coomers would think that, which, knowing the baggage you have, is not shocking at all that you think Sonic Inflation has more value. Also, do you think all the Circle Tool art pieces count as art? Honestly, it's definitely more spammy than the anti AI art image, from my experience. And wow, this meme was pretty overly trashy and biased. Not even Twitter is as bad as arguing at times, and that is saying something. Reed has more pro AI stuff too, and it's to the point where they're just as bad as the people she is complaining about, which is very ironic. All of which retread the same territory and have nothing of substance. Another thing that falls into a similar category is the NFT hate, which is the same thing as the pro AI stuff. Just repeating the same talking points and trashy parodies that they puke out because their Twitter timeline gives them enough confirmation bias. I would basically be repeating my AI point if I decided to spotlight an NFT thing Reed made, but... That isn't the only subject she whines about, as we have Reed complaining about some random thing of the day that was on Twitter for a bit, which just perfectly exemplifies Reed's pettiness. The picture in question is called, Come and Take Her. Apparently, the point of this post is about how Reed is acting pissy and sad over the fact that in 2022, cats were declared an invasive species due to the fact that they kill lots of birds when unattended and can screw up ecosystems by reducing populations to extinction, akin to how species brought in from foreign places can do the same thing, hence why cats are now considered invasive species. Reed here decides to throw a massive tantrum and misses the entire point, along with acting very ignorant by thinking this is some conspiracy against cats, with such controversial statements as, Cats are animals too. Wow, what a groundbreaking observation. Just like how a bunch of parasites were considered animals. I thought cats were dark demons who want to control humanity by making humans submit to them and take over the world. Oops, my conspiracy has been revealed. But yeah, pure spurging because of something like this is just unacceptable for someone this old. Also, birds are way better than animals as they're way cuter and interesting. So go see the cat cells while us bird chads rise to perfection. Okay, so these memes aren't good at all and are very ignorant, but Reed just doesn't do them in art, but also does them in journals as well, as seen with her overly extreme whining about the Internet Archive lawsuit. The image itself has some good research and makes a good point, even if a bit exaggerated, but when we see Reed's reply, things start to go downhill. Mamani's you said to stop the evil AI scraping that didn't go towards no artist. It went towards an effort to take down the Internet Archive, aka the Way Bag Machine. The levels of ineptitude and fear of technology to the point artists donate to a fundraiser to effectively abolish fair use is what makes you liberate my OC to the Korea of Commons in the first place. Okay, first off, there is zero proof on the screenshot that any money went to the lawsuit, but instead it was just reacting to it. It's still not a good thing, even if the Internet Archive was acting careless, but you are missing the mark by a long shot. Also, what a heckin' rebel, dude! I am a sheen of the larger demon community. I thought you'll know better than donate the grifters who use your money for god knows what purposes. If this behavior by the art world keeps up, then we won't have a public domain or create a commons. We'll have an ethical copyright and infinite Mickey Mouse protection to act until the end of time. You do not want that. After they're done crippling AR art synthesis and do an ethical version, they'll cover fan art and fan fictions next. 99% of demon art is fan art. You really want 99% of DVR gone? Because if you keep donating the life savings of these hacks, that's what could happen. No more Sonic fan art, no more MLP fun art, no more memes, no more gloss overs, no more OCs, just if it lets you with dystopian copyright. You do not want that. Jesus. This is a steep, slippery soap fallacy. So if you think this random loss will end up winning, it will result in no fan art. Okay, this is some major fear-mongering. First off, artists being able to choose if they want their art to be in a database won't be a major copyright loss. At worst, it'll lead companies to get a bit more greedy with their copyright terms. I would absolutely despise that, but that's more of a side effect if anything. Also, the AI art thing is a way more complex issue than you're making it out to be. There's a lot more ways that it could be stopped compared to just this totalitarian way. To be fair to you though, at least I could say that artists aren't really helping matters with their constant whining and tantrum throwing. 
oversimplifying the subject matter to the point where it ends up sounding more like an 80s cartoon as opposed to actual legal shit. But honestly, you really know better here with your own delusions as well, so you are still at fault here. Like I said before, AAR can be stopped in more ethical ways that don't have to resort to totalitarian means. Hell, some of the best solutions I'm seeing will actually help your precious creative common, so yeah, take that into account. Even then, it'll still be impossible to regulate shit like fan art, memes, and especially OCs, because companies kind of rely on artists in order to help succeed either by constantly sharing fan art, helping to promote shows, or even t-shirt design contests, which, while I do admit are a bit sketchy, they still get lots of help from fan artists there. No company would willingly shoot themselves in the foot just in order to be more protective of my IPs and shit like that. Also, 99% of the mirror being fan art is a major exaggeration. I would probably say 85% at the very most. The closest thing to this dystopia happening is the endless Mickey Mouse protection, and even then, Disney has not acted upon the copyright extension yet, which, honestly, I'm a bit shocked at right now, but even then, that will be hard to prove as of now. They are doing to art what movie studios tried doing to the VCR, and got their asses candid to them by Mr. Rogers in court, or what Viacom tried to do with YouTube poop. Only this time, they're wrapped in union gear and carrying a paintbrush. Don't trust these grifters. I'm extremely disappointed in the art world. If this internet archive is forced to shut down by these copyright whores, then it's your fault for donating to the fundraiser by a trade group consisting of companies like Disney, Viacom, and Adobe. Those situations are more about how ethical recording tapes were and how YTPs were transformative and saved harbor provisions respectively. The internet archive lawsuit is about how internet archive unethically changed their borrowing policy all of a sudden, which angered the publishers. There's a key difference which makes this very different from, say, the other lawsuits you mentioned here. I can agree that it's very stupid and overly vague, but it's too distinct to put in the same category, especially the Viacom lawsuit. Also, the Internet Archive isn't just going to completely shut down because of this. At worst, the book selection may be very different. If the Internet Archive ever does shutter its doors, Piracy sites will still get you to keep the media on their services. I worry about the Internet Archive too, but you're acting very irrational about this. And honestly, this fear-mongering about the Internet Archive must be the worst part of this lawsuit, as it's muddying discussion on the subject a lot, and Reed here is not helping things at all. But yeah, that's Reed's DeviantArt, and what a mess. I can't believe this is what they pride themselves on, as both the art and opinions, sorry, I can't even call them memes, are trash and a lot of it reeks from their bad behavior which looms over us and is coming closer than ever. But before I get into that, let's look at their other social media accounts Reed has and see if they're any different from the DeviantArt account. We start our look at the other social media accounts with... Scratch. Yep, that Cespedes Bird Game Maturity has returned once again and this account isn't doing anything to change that. We have a typical Scratch spam content with users like fake logos and companies. Like, I can understand doing graphic design work by making logos and fake companies to an extent, and I can even understand making jingles and company openings, but a straight-up mega corporation is where I draw the line. Like, who would actively want to run a TV channel or deal with mergers? I bet people like Ray would fall under pressure trying to make good schedules and would make the channel the Manchild Network, akin to the old Starfish Network trend back around 2016 and 2017. Also, you don't own MTN Enterprises. Despite that kitten being... dead, that studio name was already taken and used, and despite being defunct, their stuff is owned by Disney now, which is fitting knowing how everyone wants to make a corporate giant, and a bit off topic, but why do people make subsidiaries to pre-existing companies? It feels pointless since it doesn't add anything creative. I also bet Reed will make for a shitty CEO as well, but I feel like that's a given with their behavior. At least I could give credit to having actually original programming, but why is it called Cat Flower here and not Cammy's World? I found that title was meant to be a ripoff of another title which is odd since Cammy's world is a lot more original and fits better. Maybe this is a spinoff, but there's zero implication of that. I feel like this is some stupid scratch trend I fail to understand, but even then, it doesn't really add anything to Cammy, so I'm at a loss. What is a lot more interesting, though, is the large amount of drama post on Scratch. Basically, if she isn't making dumb companies and logos, she is unloading all her petty drama here, since I guess demon art was enough for her. Let us look at a few particularly interest me from oldest to newest. Remember, when you need an SMS number, instead of getting your mom's number, make this shit and whine like a baby because that will help things. Totally. 
And I think this isn't the worst part of the whole read SMS thing, but we'll have to save that for Discord behavior section. This parody was made out of spite because Reed didn't know how to make a wiki at the time and god this reeks of cope. Even on a basic issue, her ramblings make zero sense. Oh boo hoo. Some random game one over another. Why are you throwing a fit about this shit? It's not worth whining about at all. This isn't just a raid issue as a lot of people threw tantrums over this during the game awards, but you are no better in the fact that you are worse since you threw a tantrum is a lot more pathetic than most of them. Since you literally cried about it. Hey, can you tell that Reed hates Twitter Tesla Live? I seriously can't tell. Yeah, Reed really likes to A-log people. And this is one of the absolute worst examples. It ends up making her super pathetic and like a massive baby brat who can't cope and at any points become really deluded by the rage. Also, a common theme with Reed complaining about stuff here is the use of the Remove Kayla meme, which includes that Tesla Live account which is based off a Serb nationalist song titled Serbia Strong, advocating for the genocide of Muslims. So yeah, it's Cammy and Cammy's world war that Cammy and her friends hate Muslims. Pleasant thoughts. That is all I have for the Scratch account, since despite the amount of content on the page, it's all very shallow, and basically retreads a lot of the same territory as Deviantart. Really goes to show how extreme Reed's cope can get. Let's continue this social media train wreck with Nation States, a site revolving around fake nations. Now there isn't much here, probably just due to me not being into the fake nations community, but I think some of the policies and implications around them are funny if you manage to take into account Reed's actual behavior. Like people being able to kill themselves, probably over Twitter culture war drama. Reed would want kids to have fetish lessons rather than actual sex ed. There would also be people dead over petty crimes as well, and if you want to leave, you cannot. Welcome to Kami's world, bitch. Well, that was something. Let us now look at something that's not niche as hell, and look at her wiki activity. Despite Wikia being way more of a normal site by comparison to the previous two, she doesn't use her account for knowledge or preservation, but instead for other purposes. People may hate on people who edit wikis for shit like Disney Junior shows, but at least I can see they're trying to document these shows and preserve them because Lord knows no one else will. Though I won't hate a wiki account for being creatively based, even if it does kind of miss the point of making a wiki account, mostly because documenting OC War is better done with other wikia services and individual sites, while wiki's main appeal is its interconnected user base to share information, even if it isn't really by choice nowadays. So, how do your creative efforts fare on wikia? Well, we got some boring ass pages on Uneverything, which is a parody wiki read uses as a way to dump about country, so... Why bother? Well, we do have to bother with drama, but... Let's save that for later. Corporate fantasy shit. Twice. Oh, and the same with countries too. Because the identity of a nation is exactly the same as making a TV channel logo. For some reason. And the Kami fan wiki itself isn't used for actual OC lore, but instead to make more fake networks and corporations to fuel our ego. I mean, ego boosting is the only reason why someone would put this much effort into making massive corporation with programming and shit like that, so yeah. There is one more wiki though that Reed likes to wet it, and it's the Dream Logos wiki. And on that, she's actually a moderator. And, well, what else do you expect from Reed when she has moderation powers? Yep, complete abuse. It really says something about her character if she constantly bans people for the most trivial of reasons, to the point where someone had to make a video on it. Sure, it's just recording of Reed's profile, but it really shows the scale of Reed's banning spree. And I would really not trust the Dream Logos wiki just because Reed is on it. That is most of her wiki activity, but one thing did stand out to me and that is fairly different from the rest of her activity. That being an unironic Ouija creepypasta in 2023. Can you guess what happened to it with the sheer quality on display? The creepypasta was so shitty that the main creepypasta wiki removed it. Reed threw a tantrum and made false pedo accusations and moved it to the same wiki that has such classics as this and the this. Surely, a quality wiki to replace the main one. And why unironic Ouija creepypasta? Well, Reed is quite the wannabe old fag. They often gush over stuff like you're the man now dog without understanding why it even happened or the effects it would have on the internet. This is best exemplified by a comment she made where she thinks that gaming creepypastas wouldn't have existed if it weren't for Sonic.exe, despite many older creepypastas also being just as popular most notably Ben Drowned and Lavender Town Syndrome. If anything, Sonic.exe and many other cliché-written pop culture-centered creepypastas 
like the one Rain made herself, were largely detrimental in Creepypasta's reputation as a whole and were the catalyst for the wiki's quality control guidelines starting late 2012, the same year Sonic.exe started becoming popular. God, she even feels it being an old fag. More recently though, Reed's been making another wiki that is not on wiki itself, but rather on Marahees. It is referred to as the Calico Fantasy. I guess this is just a part of some sort of rebrand Reed's doing. It's not gonna replace Kami's role, but I guess it's just gonna be the general label for the Kamiverse? That's what I get anyway, but Reed just makes it a bit confusing. Though let's see if it solves the biggest issue with Kami lore, and see if it actually gives the character some sort of plot, motivation, and other things that make up an actual story, rather than just being a drama fuel vent fest. Well, there's at least a bit of improvement there, but it still feels rather lacking. I mean, this wiki page is incredibly short. It has very basic descriptions of the characters. I don't really learn that much that I couldn't already have figured out from the bios. I guess I'll consider them a bit better though, because there's a lot less stupid venti shit, and it isn't nearly as creepy, so... This does seem better, but it still is not really good at all. But I guess for the low standards Reed set for herself, I guess this is better. We're almost at the end of the tunnel now with her Neo Cities account. Something so basic and bland, it's up there with those generic bootstrap sites. Like, you can't get any more creative than basic white background and black text? Lame. Most Neo City sites exercise their creativity with HTML, but even the slightest variety wouldn't suffice for Reed. And while most of the site is just Reed spouting out their opinions in the same trashy manner they do for their Deviner and Scratch, there is also another part of the Reed site that has been growing a lot lately, even after I recorded the previous segment. Yep, it's the Lilinx. Yeah, this is the Lilinx page, and it's basically Reed Gaskaba Baby Show known as Lil and the Bally Bunch. And you might be asking right now, well, if you're a normal person that is, hey, what the hell is this Lou and the Bally Bunch shit? And it's essentially just your basic ass preschool show, like the most basic bear shit that there is. Just basic locations, basic character dynamics, nothing that even intrigues the audience. People give shit to stuff like Nature Cap, but at least I could say that there's something else for kids there, but this, this is just boring goy slop. Even looking at the art style gives off a very cheap vibe. Perfect for product spam. I don't even have to watch the show at all to tell that this is a very stupid obsession. And one that I am generally boggled someone could ever get obsessed with. And if it just ended there, that would be one thing. But the fact that she literally gasses this shit up in order to make it a fandom is even worse. Because you are not going to manufacture a fanbase. Stuff like MLP and Bluey are very rare occurrences and require miracles to go beyond the extremely autistic types. So keep your obsession to yourself and stop trying to gas this shit up. And it gets even worse from there as apparently she's trying to pit this Lou show against MLP and Bluey which... Really? Imagine trying to pit preschool shows against each other. That would be like pitting Thomas the Tank Engine and JJ the Jet Point against each other or pitting Barney and the Wiggles against each other, or even pitting Arthur and F Smagwin against each other. The Virgin Farther versus the Chad Smagwin. Farther. Sounds like Fadfur. Had Steven Crowder voiced a character named The Brain. Matt Damon for Sona. Absolutely fun day, Game Boy Color. Smagwin. 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 Smag- You see how this shit makes it look embarrassing? Yeah, you better listen to this. But yeah, other than that, there isn't anything I would really consider special about the Neo Cities page. It does contain Reed's Dark Secrets, but we'll save that for later. I know I've been hyping up these Dark Secrets of Reed, but at the same time, there's so much baggage that you need a separate section for it, so this is why I'm hyping it up so much. Finally, we have her twit. <coughs> we have her twit. <coughs> we have her- oh, well, damn. Well, I have to look at this remaining account of raids. Not the act be able to walk out with SMH, I shit you not. It's the last post was from September 2022, but it'll have to do. First, I must mention that I first found Reed on Twitter when they liked a tweet I made making fun of Camhead. And when I checked out their account, God, the account was so generic that it made me sigh the biggest sigh. And yep, that is still true. 
They are deep into the culture war with generic opinions and zero originality or any hint of new ones to their opinions. Returning from the same echo chamber and getting mad whenever today's Twitter villain is. They don't even have any art on the media tab, or at least, they don't regularly consistently post it, instead just spamming Cami in order to get free requests and shit like that, which thankfully most people actively avoid. Reed's Twitter is overall just another cog in a generic opinion user system on Twitter, basically pure Twitter brain rock. They even spreads their demon art in Discord too. This isn't the only place where she gets mad at villains of the day and gets fed culture war shit, as Reed also has a Tumblr, which is just the same as the Twitter account because of the clear DNA between the two after the Tumblr exodus, and Mastodon, which is just Twitter but for all the Tumblr exodus people. Yeah, even when Reed isn't on Twitter, they still have the brain rot, and it just doesn't apply to similar social medias. They work on Twitter all the time and complain about, oh, so much, and causes a lot of drama. And speaking of drama, Reed is a Redditor. Okay, I have nothing else to say since it's just the same as the Twitter, Tumblr, and Mastodon, but I wanted to make that joke, so yeah. The final Reed account of note I'll talk about here is the character AI stuff. Both Cam and Alexandra have it, but there's a lot of others that also have it as well. And there are a few chat sessions that I and others have did which are funny. Here are the highlights. Damn, that's a lot. I'm glad we undid the gaslighting that Reed gave all her characters. We are the true heroes. Okay, in all seriousness, we'll now look at the drama side of Reed and find all the hypocrisies with her because this is something that's very rooted in Reed and shows the true toxic side of Reed. So buckle up and grab a rope because oh boy, there's a lot to cover. Drama is something that's been a part of Reed's brand for basically forever. It leaks into their Deviner and Scratch accounts all the time. And though I have covered a good amount of that there, there is something in Reed's social medias which ends up being a breeding ground for petty drama. And it is way worse than even their demon art. So you know that public discord server Reed has? Yep, that is the epicenter of the many dramas Reed has been in. So let's enter it and see how the drama unfolds. At first this server looks nothing special, and for the most part it really isn't, as most of the channels are pretty boring. But some have stuff like this. But what really makes this server special are the vent channels, which reach all new levels of pettiness and is where Reed plots a lot of her master plans against stuff she hates. We will be looking at the recent drama she's been in from least egregious to most egregious, and expose Reed for who she really is. Let's start with something simple, Reed's incessant complaining. This ranges from the simple stuff like the usual bad venting topics, from the turning online culture warrior issues. Like, for example, trans bills, terming online turfs, complaining about dumb tweets and articles, and some troll who goes under Lee Epic Carcass, who they can't seem to get over. But we'll get to them later. Because there's a lot more context behind that Lee Epic Carcass guy than Free lets on. They also have a very fragile ego, too, as she begs for people to watch her, and if you dare unfollow her, she'll throw a fit about it because numbers are all she has for validation. But then there's some stupid stuff that's next level autistic complaining. Like for example, whining when Reddit went down for 3 hours, and whenever one of their Twitters is down, Reed throws a massive tantrum about it. The worst example of this was when Reed needed an SMS number and that resulted in a major tantrum with Reed, being the mature adult they are. Depicting of their Kami character being mutilated and killed, and resorting to suicide baiting, a common tactic Reed uses, in order to garner sympathy from their Discord echo chamber and even our watchers alike. And they even make several whiny posts on platforms like Scratch too. Damn. Imagine being so turny online that you whine this much about making an account instead of making a new one, or spurg over a site being temporary down for maintenance. She later did the same Discord technique along with threatening deactivation, all because her requests were not answered quickly enough. Damn. Talk about pathetic. And that is just the beginning of Reed's little whiny acts. They also resort to childlike venting in order to win arguments, like this one regarding one of their mutual sister's arguments about AI. All I have to say here is, damn, and when she isn't acting like a whiny dramatic baby, she could also be quite the warhead, like wanting Japan to be nuked for a third time just because Pixiv exists. Okay, ignoring all the cultural differences with the US and Japan, 
the fact that Pixiv also has safer work artwork, and sites like Ink Bunny existing and being quarter with Shota and Wally in their own right, just because there's some moderation exists on D game for Affinity, doesn't mean Lil Shota doesn't exist on either of those sites. They just have to be more underground about it. And in Fur Fetty's case, it is way worse, as the site owner, Dragoneer, was said that they kicked Growly, a convicted child predator. Yeah, that shoots lots of holes in your statement. Also, do you want the law of Japan to suffer long-lasting pain because of one site's careless moderation? That is way too extreme. But hey, this is the same person to be good enough to think that the fucking confederacy would have had an earlier civil rights movement. The confederacy. Yeah, she really knows nothing. Oh, and if you think that was the end of her war fantasies, then you will have to see this. Apparently, for Sesame Street NFTs and the big bad meat spirited meanie weenie ideology known as capitalism to have never been brought into fruition, Canada would have had to win the War of 1812. What? Okay, first off, Canada is a capitalist nation. It would have been capitalist either way if they won or lost. Even if they were not back then, Canada invading the US would be extremely unrealistic. And even if we ignore that, capitalistic influence would have still occurred over the centuries which would still result in NFTs. Yeah, not well thought out. This is like saying the Confederacy should have won the Civil War in order to prevent Dollar Tree from increasing their prices. A big logical leap indeed. Also, Rage frequently throws around the intuition that Crypto Bros are grooming kids into getting into cryptocurrency and NFTs, because the term groomer has become buried into the minds of terminology people like Reed as the lowest common hitting fruit when it comes to making an accusation against someone. Oh, and speaking of NFT hate, she acts like a whiny bitch about that despite NFTs being a dying novelty scam. For a while, Ray had complained about NFTs non-stop, particularly during their peak. They still continue to do this despite it largely dying down as of recently. Given the Sesame Street event post was made the day I am scripting this part, March 16th, god this video is taking way too long, they have gone as far as to display more blatant xenophobia towards Eric Nakagawa, the co-founder of Cheeseburger, and threatened to send Zippo Cat to him over him selling his old cat memes as NFTs. For the uninitiated, Zippo Cat is a video of a kitten being literally burned alive, which was uploaded to the stock site Orgorish, which was later rebranded to its more famous name, Live Leak, in 2006. A particular incident on You're the Man Now Dog involving the video will come to spawn the not even do music memes that Reed frequently gushes over. 50 frames of the video survive as an image, and I heavily advise not looking this up, as those frames alone are revolting. Judging by this, you can already tell just how low Reed's standards are. Possessing and distributing animal abuse material to someone over them selling JPEGs of cats with captions on them. These bad optics not only make you look like a sociopath, but also largely hurt your case. If anything, if you have ended up attracting the outrage from both crypto bros and anti-NFT activists, rather than Cheeseburger himself, had you gone through with this. For someone who constantly virtue signals about NFTs are bad for the environment, or how transphobia and pedophilia are bad, Reed has a rather concerning moral compass, which we'll delve into more later. But hey, this is the person who said that some places of the dark web are safer than YouTube because of some YouTube hackers. Uh, newsflash, but every site has hackers. Assuming other places won't have hackers is an ignorant assumption. It's just that YouTube is more popular, so more people are getting targeted. Plus, suggesting that the dark web, which hosts real CP along with other illegal material, and even containing data stealing websites, are less likely to hack you, is fucking downright idiotic, even as a joke. They are a lot more likely to hack you, since they collect a lot more information on you and use it in very legal ways. Did you ever think that through? Also, ew, Daily Motion Vidly, bad video sharing site taste. I wonder if Ray knows you can't even make video game reviews on Daily Motion due to French laws, which Daily Motion is based in. And as for Vidly, well, that site is inconsistent as hell, has low quality, and its community is a cesspit of drama. But the dark web point does transition to something rather concerning about Reed, which also highlights their hypocrisies on a certain subject matter. Reed makes smut of her OCs who are kids. 
the main character of which, Cammy, an 11 year old, is intended to be Reed's self insert. They have done this since at the very least 2019, and here is the lowdown on it. So in 2019, Reed was on DeviantArt under the name Reed Kamafa, and they were very open about their fetishes. They were constantly pushing a fetish they had to the ground, the most prominent one being their piss fetish, more specifically something known as Omorashi, the act of someone pissing themselves, particularly young kids. They not only used it for the Kami character, but also requested for several characters pissing themselves, most notably the Mario character Toadette, who they hate canon as a 7 year old. Reed also supposedly tried to get their parents permission to make a Toadette piss jar. It doesn't stop with fictional characters either. Reed allegedly went as far as searching for images of 9 year olds getting their periods which she admitted to on the randomness wiki which is a community full of minors. Most of the evidence of Reed admitting to this has been lost to time due to the fact that the original randomness wiki shut down. But there are these old archives of Reed Kamafa stamps alongside a journal which pressures someone known as Dapboy and Spongegar1 to not spread those rumors which indicate that she did actually do it. If anyone else is interested in sharing any more proof of this happening, then be sure to mention in the comment section below, go to one of my social media pages, or DM me on Discord. Reed being very open about their fetishes has lasted for a while, and sometime after being rightfully called out, Reed will begin sweeping it under the rug after it was brought back to the light starting in 2021, claiming that 2019 is irrelevant but let's look at how this still reflects on Reed's in recent years. Here is this anime groovy and anatomy facts paste bin, a character AI fetish roleplay where Exandria burns her private parts, with her private parts being burned off by a pad and having to get her private parts surgically redone. Yeah, Reed somehow found that funny, apparently. And most infamously, an image made showing the Cammy's Roll Girls on their periods with an overly detailed description of what goes on when it happens. When these underaged girls are on their period. They have made several excuses in order to make people think they're all innocent and stuff. Like trying to retcon these things out of Kami's world in order to sweep these under the rug, and calling themselves a sex repulsed asexual, which was stolen verbatim from one of my newer mutuals who just so happened to use to be friends with Reed back then before calling them out. Hell, in that very same post where they made the underage period image, they used that phrase. Which is a shitty excuse because why would you even make something like this if you're supposedly repulsed by underaged vaginas? The only way someone would want to make something like this is to get off to it or find pleasure in it. In fact, asexuals could still get fetishes even if they're not into the concept of sex itself. Which can include masturbating to said fetishes, no matter what kind they are. Asexuality is more of a spectrum than you realize, you know. Frankly. Bringing asexuality to sweep what you did under the rug not only makes you look worse, but also isn't helping the numerous LGBT individuals who are largely being labeled as pedophiles. Reed also claims that the piss stuff was back in 2018 and is irrelevant, as if you seeking images of real underage girls that pertain to your fetish 4 years ago would ever be excusable. As of now, Reed is 19 years old and is going to turn 20 in July. If we do the math, We'll figure out that they did the Omarashi Pedo period shit around the age of 16 if we take into account the July birthday. Yeah, sorry Reed, but age does not excuse you trying to find what's essentially softcore CP on the web. Now that both of the main excuses are dead in the water, what else has Reed done to hide their sick fuckery? Well, aside from constant denial, the temporary raised age of Kami character 21, but this was a false facade Reed tried to put in order to give the illusion of improvement all while Reed is trying to give legitimate advice on how to better themselves, which ended up going in one year not the other. As far as the aging up of Kami goes, they don't provide any difference between the three timelines. In fact, when someone asked about the details of adult Kami, Reed threw a fit. Also, they have since retconned the aging up of Kami, bringing it down to 11, and even regretted aging her up. 
Showing how they aren't genuine about improvement and only want their tractors to get off their case. The only way Cammy will ever get older is if she's one year older and Ri goes into explicit detail about Cammy going through puberty. Oh wait, and they have the balls to call it fan disservice despite the description going into graphic detail and lining up with their fetishes, like their underwear. Ugh. Made with procreate? Ew, I hope you don't procreate. Here we have an early bio of Cammy, which also includes an odd amount of detail about their undergarment and lists that she specifically likes girl omorashi and dislikes boy omorashi. Oddly specific detail. If that wasn't bad enough, there's a slightly older Cammy bio which goes into some extreme detail about Cammy being a fucking creep, her abnormal childlike growth, which still applies to newer bios too, and her supposed bladder issues and PTSD of diapers because she was fucking raped by an ABDL fetishist. Ew. Fuck that. It's one thing to write a traumatic backstory for a character or to even portray the worst dregs humanity has to offer works of fiction. But this is just vile both in terms of the contents and the character being Reed's projection of themselves and their fetishes on what's meant to be an 11 year old. Plus, Reed's lore is very lighthearted, or whatever the fuck Tonji's trying to go for considering the odd switch and sway of whatever Tonji decides to do at the moment. To no one's surprise, this edition was retconned after Reed got called out for it. The fact they're still in contact with children Reed, and are trying to hide this is absolutely disgusting. You have never owned up to it, and have continued to live with these skeletons in your diaper panty filled closet. Now to get to her stances on pedophilia, a subject Reed is particularly very passionate about. Gee, I wonder why as they frequently try to call out predators and have absolutely failed due to her stances being rather inconsistent. First she tried to cancel Rupert by calling him a pedophile, but just say that he made fetish art out of a character based on his sister. They later made the statement, once a pedo, always a pedo, which is insanely hypocritical coming from Reed, but it gets worse, as Reed would eventually backpedal on this claim and deny that the drawings in question were even intended to be fetishistic, or that they even involved Rupert's younger sister. They then made a redemption image of Rupert without even apologizing for the accusations or even understanding how serious pedo accusations are. But hey, that's typical for someone who throws the word rumor around like it's some average insult. But if you thought this only happened once, then oh boy, it happened again with someone known as the Nexus of DA, who she called a pedo due to making fetish art of underage characters, and him claiming that he was not a pedophile anymore, which while ironic for Reed, is something with more substance. Reed decided to wuss out again however, and made another half-assed redemption. So which is it Reed? Are you always a pedophile for doing this stuff? Or can the accused or even actual pedophiles have redemption arcs and no longer be pedophile? Because this double standard really highlights your true colors. So yeah Reed. You must confront the pedo inside you and decide if you're willing to take responsibility for what you've done or if you'll continue screaming into a pillow about how bad your detractors are for reasonably calling you out. The last of the drama segments also goes further though as she's known to harass people all the time when she's on her ship fit for not getting what she wants. This is expected of someone who alludes to taking out the cats, but let's look at a few situations that they have dealt with someone in a very immature manner. Starting with the meme. Yep, I had to deal with Reed. It had to do with a tweet basically saying that their art style sucks, and Reed, being the mature adult they are, thought I deserved a lynching in a nice little DMCA, which she might do to this video if they're trigger happy enough. But Reed, I thought all art should be free to take, especially by our robot overlords. Yeah, that spiraled out into a massive complaining session that compared my art style to Rainbow Kitty which isn't even accurate. I'm more of a greatest one in terms of my art, but go off. Then another one of my mutuals, Full Speedy Josh, replied to Reed saying how Reed shouldn't throw DMCAs because someone didn't like their art style, and Reed just took her toys and ran out to the driveway, along with calling Josh a logo kid with rejected Greedy Fathom character, which, considering they're unironically inspired by Greedy Fathom, really shows how hypocritical Reed is. 
Then she decided to follow me after that, which while isn't the first time she's interacted with a post of mine, is a clear attempt at trying to suck up to me in order to forgive them. But all I have to say to that is, I don't forgive you. You literally don't follow me a bit afterwards, so you really are genuine outside of trying to suck up to me. And thankfully, I know when I see a suck up when I see one. So, no dice. Reed also pulled the same tactic on someone known as Tiki the Fairy, who Reed criticized over Tiki shipping herself with Simon from the band Prozac. And it was all because of a stupid Bendy fan tweet of all things, I shit you not. Also, what Reed? Is being into adults a bad thing now? After Tiki called Reed out on her gaslighting BS, Reed resorted to the same tactic of sucking up the Tiki, which didn't work in Reed's favor. Reed has continued to use this tactic over time, and the worst example of that has to be done to a literal 14 year old. Enter Emma Z World, a 14 year old Friday Funkin' fan, someone who had to deal with Reed's wrath, and who got the worst harassment of them all. The situation started with a person known as Sakura, who was being slandered on the Friday Funkin' fan wiki, and Reed took it to the next level when they got into several shit fits with the ultimate one about getting defensive over Sakura, who was causing drama. It resulted in her account getting banned. This resulted in Reed getting her butt buddies to raid the wiki with a Le Epic Funny scoreboard too, which goes as far as hijacking admin accounts, but after realizing that was retarded, she later too decided to engage Plan B. Now we get to the part with Emma, who runs a Discord server based on the wiki, and as revenge, Reed decided to raid the server while her butt buddies called Emma a uh, Ed's World knockoff. Yeah, that is something. The plan went through, and they attempted to latch their yesmen onto the server. Thankfully though, in Reed's bastion of competence, they only managed to raid the fucking spam channel of the server, with random do not hug me I'm scared and bluey shit. Reminder by the way, Reed is 19, and Emma is 14. Real epic fail Reed build, Reed decided to make peace with Emma, which Emma reluctantly accepted. But there was a catch. Reed had to wait a week or so in order to talk out the apology. But once again, Reed's masterful competence manifested, and Reed threw a big tantrum about waiting a week like a baby wanting her candy right now rather than wait. I have to reiterate, by the way, Reed is a 19 year old adult, and Emma is a minor who's 14. Reed is quite the baby, betting for someone who mentions ABDL and soft candy. So after the tantrum Reed threw and Emma giving up on them, Reed made a slander journal mentioning an NSFW account which didn't have any porn, but was just swearing in basic gore. Which, based on my investigations, the only videos on that channel had swearing and a serious video about Technoblade. So yeah, Reed Slander failed miserably, and thus the overgrown vegetable went back to the garden, never to be seen by Emma, Hughes, Sakura, or anyone else related to the Friday Funkin' fan wiki. However, this is Reed, so of course, they have to get themselves into another shit fit. And it happened right during the ending of this video, but this was way too large in order to ignore, especially since it now affects Reed's output by a large margin. Which makes me very glad that I actually managed to archive all of this before it went down. And with Reed trying to sweep this shit under the rug in order to make themselves look better, it's more than worthy to call out, alongside it just being the latest thing in general. So here we have the PMZ situation. Now PMZ, just like the other previous two artists I mentioned, are your typical girly stimmy types who just self ship themselves with a character. Nothing too special for raid targets, and they are generally dime a dozen on social media, but the difference between PMZ and the other two artists of a similar mold is the fact that PMZ and Reed used to be mutuals with each other. That was until PMZ learned about Reed Kamafa's dark secrets and their disgusting degeneracy, which thus resulted in PMZ blocking Reed Kamafa. When Reed would later discover that she was blocked by PMZ, Reed decided to do the typical action she does whenever things don't go exactly her way. Throw a fit about it. And this fit wasn't just exclusive to Discord as well, as on Scratch she made a hate project on Tenura which was based on an old You're the Man Now dog trend. Which, on a side note, for how much Reed loves to talk about You're the Man Now dog, apparently they don't seem to have an account on there, despite HTML being a very basic language to learn, thus showing how Reed only really latches onto early internet aesthetics so that she can look more special. 
On DeviantArt though, Reed's rage went really far, which includes making hate art, requesting hate art, accusing her of making Rule 34, which, while well, yeah, I don't think she should be drawing this sussy stuff at the age of 15, Reed is definitely exaggerating this and making it look a lot worse than it actually is, along with just including some more bits of irony. And also making a Cammy's World villain out of PMZ in a similar manner to what they did with Dimitri. And the icing on top of all this? Reed is being asked to be cheered up like a fucking two year old would. I'm not joking either. I'll also give you all a quick reminder by the way as well. PMZ is 15 years old and Reed is 19 years old. Yeah, there's a large gap in maturity here, a lot more than the ages can infer. After PMZ was informed about Reed's slander campaign, they then vented on Deviner about the situation considering it was essentially a 19 year old harassing a 15 year old. In response, Reed went from acting like a 2 year old to treating PMZ like a 2 year old, asking for her butt buddies to cheer her up, like she is some sort of baby or something. Alongside that, we also got bonus denial and deflection points. But yeah, after Reed's plan of treating PMZ like a two-year-old and deflecting all the criticism failed, she then did that whole, wah, I'm tired, I'm scared, I'm sorry, thing with the whole black icon. But people like Bracket saw past the facade and called her out for what she really did. And after that failed, well, Reed decided to activate her DeviantArt. Which is why when you try searching up Attack of the Cat People on DeviantArt, you will get nothing. This was just a clear attempt at damage control though, and it's very obvious knowing how she words it. Reed then went through a huge coping arc, with such highlights as... Trying to make false reasons as to why she deactivated her DeviantArt account. Constantly trying to suck up to Bracket Neutron and getting all her butt buddies to message him. Creating an imaginary Cammy's World fanbase that is apparently toxic even though there's no active Kami series being made, denying that she was ever in the wrong in the PMZ situation, and not even apologizing to her, and killing off Exandria because of that one toxic kitty, and replacing her with what's essentially a bootleg Exandria, but was thrown out of a window, and then just reviving Exandria after all that because Re now forgot about the situation. And yep, that's how the situation just about ended, with Reed just forgetting about it and moving on like nothing ever happened, instead of taking responsibility like a mature adult should. Really says a lot about Reed, doesn't it? Some of you might be thinking at this point that all of Reed's threats are fake. I mean, it's standard practice for Tards to make empty threats about doing unmentionable things. But oh boy, Reed has actually attempted multiple doxings on those naughty NFT people. So, let's look at our Neo City site again. You might have noticed that there's a secret section of the site which requires a password to get in, but with a workaround, we could get into the secret section. Every NeoCity site has a blog section where updates are given about the site and people can make comments. We can view the entire history here, and now we can have that skill, we can find the pages. One of them is an IP grabber, likely a failed trolling attempt, but we also have this Operation NFT fault page, with the quote, pools closed due to WFT, super secret code, do not enter into this into any archiving websites. Now the code we have here is for a site known as Archives Day. The site itself is a better version of the Internet Archive because it's a lot more consistent than that site, and the load times are a lot better as well. One of the things this site has is a short form code for the archives, and if we put H6V2J on the archive link, we have this page. Yep. Reed has doxxed four accounts for the war crime of liking NFTs. Yeah, this is full on proof that Reed will do anything to get back at people who not only wrong them, but over petty disagreements as well. Reed is even encouraging others to dox crypto bros as well. What a scumbag! Thankfully though, their doxing skills are shit, given how the doxes Reed provides contain info that's extremely vague, like location, somewhere in Auckland, New Zealand, or Kusro, Peru. Real precise locations you have there, your toughness is really intimidating. Still though, it's just pathetic how they're willing to go this far over even the slightest disagreements. All of this does is make them a wannabe cyber carnival, which would warrant another visit from the feds. 
this time followed by a potential arrest as well. Also, since this is on archive today, the page will likely remain up forever. Phew. That was a lot to unpack. They have a lot more under their belt, like advocating for the bombing of several US states over laws regarding transgender youth, laws that don't even affect Reed since they live in Canada apparently, and wishing death upon the big bad David's Asbob. I highly encourage anyone who's had experience with Reed to provide any testimonies they might have, either on here or on another site like DeviantArt. But yeah, we have to conclude this disaster, now as things come tumbling down. Oh, Reed, Reed, Reed. You are easily the worst person I've covered on Space Critiques. You are a talentless hack who behaves like a prepubescent child with the reasoning skills of a fetus and impulse that makes crack addicts look normal, while a logging subject matters to death with your cult-like echo chamber bowing down to you with any other opinions being bashed or kicked to death. You start shit with whoever disagrees with you and not only forces people to think like you, but also throw tantrums over things not being exactly like your terms. You also like little girls performing pissing and fury decks for your sick little sexual fantasy, and no matter how much you hide it, you will eventually bring it back up again, and make yourself a major hypocrite. Oh yeah, and you also repeat the same mistakes all over again. No matter how many people you tell you to stop, or how many altercations you have, you just end up getting yourself into lots of shit. You are just destined to repeat mistakes, and that is just sad. You are a horrible person who needs help badly. Oh, and if you think about copyright striking this video because you can't handle criticism, then that will be on your record, and this video will continue to be re-uploaded until you give up. If you ever as willing to improve yourself as you make yourself out to be, the best advice I have for you is to leave the internet entirely, get a job, aspire to do something productive, instead of spending all day of yours wasting away on Discord, venting about the most frivolous shit, get psychiatric help, and stay the fuck away from kids. Also, I have a message to Beepus Man. Look, Beepus, I understand very well that you are expecting Reed to change for the better, despite them learning nothing from their excessive outbursts and fuckups. But this is just a way worse tedious and troll situation. Reed is a completely unreasonable individual who seeks no improvement whatsoever. Simple as that. Reed will continue shifting the blame onto others and throw tiny little shit fits over petty disagreements with you. And overall resort to childlike manipulation tactics to convince you to stick around with them. It's very evident to me that your relationship with Reed has been deteriorating over time and they view you as nothing more than a middleman who they rely on whenever they are confronted about their unhinged behavior. Given the circumstances at hand, I advise you just to leave Reed to rot by themselves, in favor of finding someone who is capable of having genuine conversations with you, and is a more sensible person overall. This is Spacey talking to Beepus, and that message is over. Damn, what a video. I bet this video will be very long and filled with lots of stuff. I hope my effort is worth it because oh boy, this bloated out to be way bigger than I ever anticipated it being. So yeah, I have to go now and figure out how to deal with the inevitable drama this will spawn. So yeah, this is Spacey and I'm off now. Bye! And if Reed ever makes it this far, I am not Kirkus. I am Kirkus. And as Kirkus, guess what, Reed? You're gonna have to forever cope about me. Chicks are flat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs>